All right, character animators, here is going to be a, a little tutorial to help you lip sync your character and make some additional changes to the scene. So here's my little person. I'm going to set my rest pose so that her head's on straight. Um, notice that her mouth is not moving. It has the smile and the ooh. All of that stuff should work. Oh, I have just kind of a plain weird mouth. But anyway, so those work. and The blinking works. The eyebrows work. All of that works. Um, and then my character's moving. Uh, but unfortunately, my character has uh, no mouth action going on. And that's because we have to lip sync it. So I've got the mouth actions in there, but has to be lip sync. Now down here below, I'm going to delete this, but I've already added my sound and then gone through this a couple of times. I went through it once and added my keyboard triggers. I went through it once with a lip sync, and then I did an eye gaze and face. So I'm going to delete all of these because you can delete these. And so I just want you to know that if you mess up on these, it's not a big deal because you just delete them. I'm also going to go ahead and delete my audio, but obviously I wouldn't have to do that. So whenever you've got your audio recorded, it's going to go in here, and that's where that's going to render from. Also notice if my person is frozen, that means I'm not clicked on her down here. So if I have to be clicked on her for this to track her, so that's the other thing. And then to load her up in the puppet, you double click so that it says puppet and then the name of your puppet. And when you double click, it'll take you in here. And of course, I can see all of my mouth states. Remember that with a mouth... You have a bunch of layers. It just hides them. The default, it, as long as it's called mouth, if you have the right name, is that it'll only show whichever one it needs at that moment. So in class, one of the examples was I stuck my tongue out, and um, I've got the this one assigned a keyboard shortcut. And so we talked about how to do that, but just as a reminder down here at the bottom, when I'm clicked on this layer, I can set a keyboard shortcut. I put T and then hide others in the group. And that means that don't show the other mouths, just show this one. And you could do that with anything. So you should have at least one of those types of things happening in yours as well. So I've got that going on, and I'll have to record that every now and then, I guess, if I wanted to stick her tongue out, then I'll have to press the letter T. All right, so additionally, you have to have some draggers. So really, before you start doing all of this stuff, you need to get your person set up properly. So right now, my person's just kind of hanging here. And I've got my arm or my hand where I can drag it, but right now, uh, as far as it's it's named where I can actually pick it up and move it, let me go down here. These have plus signs, so they have crowns. So my left arm has a crown, my right arm has a crown. Those are all in here and prepared to be able to use. Those are just those. And then this is the um, the actual dress, right? So I've got to connect it because right now the arm is not connected to the dress itself. So what you can do is you take your black arrow tool and you can click on the item. And notice that when you're clicked on the items, we have different little options um, over here. So for instance, actually let me click on the arm, this layer here. When you're clicked on the top layer of it, you should be able to see the registration point. And it says attach style free, and it's attached to. So if something doesn't seem to be attaching properly, you need to change this. So like in this case, the only thing I can really attach it to, because the only thing it's adjacent to is the body, and then the attach style, you can choose which attach style that you need. Uh, free, weld, or hinge. And they're going to move different ways based on which one you have. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a dragger so I can drag this one. That's this tool here. It ha You can only do it to one of these uh, warp independent layers, the ones that have the crowns. So I'm going to click here and put this on the arm, or on the hand, I guess, rather. So now it's a draggable. And if I go into here, notice I can drag it, but unfortunately it's not connected right? I didn't do any anything to really connect it in a proper way. So in this case, then, and you have to get used to the fact that when you add these little things in here, they put little numbers. So sometimes you, I accidentally just add these things all over the place and I don't know what, what's going on. So you've got to be really careful about that too. All right, so I've got that going on there. I could staple the hand so that it, can, it connects somewhere in here. That's one way to do it. Um, or I can change how the attachment is as well. So Right now it's attached free. If I change it to weld, let's look and see what that does. We go back in here. Now notice what it does. It welds it in there, which looks a little bit awkward. And then we can try hinge. And so it, it's not that there's a right or wrong way. It depends on your puppet as to what's going to look right. Okay, so this is spinning around based on some point. Notice that it's got a point there that it's like attached to. Okay, and that's this point here where it says left arm. So if I wanted to change where that hinge is at, then I could move this to a different position. Now it's going to be hinged that way. 
So you just kind of have to decide. Now, hopefully you don't have arms that aren't part of your sleeves, you know, like this one. Um, but in the event that you did, and I would definitely, you know, divide those pieces so you don't have this kind of an issue here. But for this example, we're just going to let it go. Now, remember, you can also add bones or sticks as they call them in here. So if I wanted to make sure that didn't warp crazy, I could put a stick in here. Um, and then it can't warp certain ways. Now, it's also going to not melt me a bit not allow me to do certain things but all right so we'll just say that's good enough for now i can't make this arm move on its own because it's just part of the dress it's not on its own layer and it doesn't have a plus sign on it in illustrator so i can't warp it independent so i'm kind of out of luck on that all right additionally if we wanted to add a um, dangler so that it wasn't so stuck to the bottom because you're like I move around but it's just kind of stuck to the bottom you can attempt to add danglers you're going to click on the body section itself so the whole body is selected and then these little items are your dangle tool same thing if you're having like problems with feet flying away you can staple your feet um, and things like that so I could put a, a dangle here and here and depending on where you put these it may act a little differently so see now when I move this kind of moves with it a little bit so if your person's a little too you know standing still not doing enough you can add that in there as well okay enough about that let's go ahead and lip sync this so in order to lip sync it you're going to drag your audio file and put it down on the timeline now if you're going to leave like five seconds of let me just wiggle around time you need to scoot this down so i'm going to scoot this down at the five second mark so that the audio will not start until we get here okay so at this point it's just sitting there and then we will lip sync it and then I want to have some more space here at the end when it's um, you know finished so I've got that going on there then you're going to select both lines so click and hold um, shift to select each one and then you're going to come up here to your timeline and compute a lip sync from the scene audio and then it's going to take your lip sync it's going to analyze it all it's going to take a minute and then it should put in your mouth forms and there's going to be a thing that shows up underneath here for the lip syncing all right so we've got that now if I play this this point hopefully you can hear this hello I am Tanya a really strange looking Tanya Don't okay now notice when that's all happening like she's not blinking her head's not moving like she is stuck and it is just mouths so all lip sync does is compute that so like otherwise she's not doing anything so you're going to have to do a second take where you add in those things so over here you're going to set your rest pose and you're going to make sure your webcam is on so it can track you so you can control it <laughs> look at me just smiling it thinks i'm smiling all the time i need to make myself angry looking okay and then i'm going to hit this record button here now it's going to record my actions it's not going to record any audio because i have my microphone turned off so it's not going to do anything there um, but I'm going to hit the record button and I'm just going to kind of move around, wiggle a little bit, make sure I blink, all that good stuff. And I'm going to have my finger on T. I could do the whole like stick my tongue out thing at some point if I wanted to or whatever. So here we go. I'm just going to let it go. Now I'm going to let it talk too because I want her to blink and stuff while she's talking. So here we go. Hello, I am Tanya. A really strange looking Tanya. Don't make me mad or I will stick my tongue out at you. Goodbye. Okay, well, obviously that one was like really long because I didn't have much talking. But now you can see down here we've got like take five, camera input, camera input, the handle from when I drug the hand. And then the keyboard trigger for the letter T, which then sticks the tongue out. So now I'll play this back. You notice she's moving around, smiling, looking around. Hello. And the talking I part happens. Tanya. And those mouths really are going to override the rest of it. Don't make me mad or I will stick my tongue out at you. Goodbye. Okay, so there we go. Wave the hand, let it go. We want to kind of have some dead time at the end where it's just kind of blinking and looking around. Um, that sort of thing like that okay and there we go and I mean when it gets to the end it's gonna be done it's like straight up over it's finished okay all right so that is basically the process for lip-syncing it 
and recording the action and doing the dragger. Now, if you don't like something, like if I don't like how that draggable worked, I could just click here again and redo that part. Um, and as long as I don't get rid of this line, it would keep it. But if I delete this line, then it would redo my dragger. And you can go back through and tell it what things you want it to look at and what things you don't. So like if I wanted to re-record this, but I don't want it to do my eye gaze or my face or whatever, I can uncheck those. I can say, no, you know what? Let's not do those parts here. Let's turn those off. Um, also remember with your dragger, you can have it set to where it returns back to rest or it holds into place. So if it holds into place after I lift my hand, the hand stays up until I drag it back down. Or I can set it so there's a delay. So when I lift it up, if it takes two or three seconds before it falls back down, I can do that as well. All right, so that is pretty much the story there. I do find it to be kind of easy, especially for a 30 second thing to just re-record if you don't like the way that your eye gaze or your face or your draggers or whatever work. Um, now, when you're done with this, you literally just save it like normal. Just It should auto save. And then whenever you get ready to use it in Premiere, You'll just import it in so it's in Premiere, like over in Premiere's little uh, project window, and then you drag it onto your timeline. And that's basically it. You'll put the background behind it, and then you'll just edit as if this was a movie clip or a, a film clip that you've drug in. All right, so hopefully that helps you understand how to do the lip syncing and how to get your character moving in Character Animator.